What's up everybody? It's Emmett, your buddy from Haven for Heroes, and we have our first giveaway. Remember our friend Steve from uh, Cyberspace Comics? Uh, he's nice enough to give us, uh, you know, he's a friend of mine, and give us one for a giveaway to everybody that's been watching the show. Uh, so basically you're gonna have to hit the like button, and leave a comment if you wanna get Predator number one variant. This is by you, very cool. One of the really highly detailed variants. So yeah, this show is gonna be about advertisement. This is one of the ways you can advertise, is to give away something and let people know that you're out there. We know that Cyberspace Comics has a huge selection on the internet. What he's doing is he's giving these away free. So if you go to the Cyberspace Comic website, he is giving them away free to all of his customers when you make a certain uh, purchase and all the details will be on his website. We have one to give away free. There's no purchase or anything necessary. So this is a really cool. Our first giveaway is an exclusive uh, approved by Marvel. Hey, special alert, approved by Marvel. Unlike some other exclusives we know that are out there. Um, I think that's been beaten to death, so um, I won't go into that exactly. Uh, I do have some comments on that, and you'll have to go to Haven for Heroes' uh, YouTube channel to see that. But uh, enjoy the uh, episode about uh, advertisement. Check test one, two. Sorry. That's all right. It just gets my body, gets sticky. All right. And <laughs> good. It's moist. <laughs> Hey there, Tales from the Flipside family. It's Emmett again from Haven for Heroes with some more comic shop talk. Today we're gonna to talk about uh, advertising. So there's a lot of kinds of advertising. I'll tell you the ones I've tried, I'll tell you the ones that didn't work, I'll tell you the ones that did work. Uh, they may not work for you in your area. Uh, and I'd like to know that. If you've tried any of these, if you are a comic shop already and you're looking for, you're uh, watching for some helpful hints, um, some little piece of knowledge. I'm always learning. I'm always watching other shows uh, uh, that own comic shops and seeing what they're doing. A lot of times they aren't giving away their trade secrets um, right out in the open, but uh, sometimes, you know, if you watch, you can kind of tell where they're moving and what they're doing. So advertising, let's get into it. So I tried the newspaper uh, when I first opened. Um, it was a uh, fairly decent sized uh, local paper um, and it was very expensive and I got zero out of it. Um, then uh, I've tried radio. That was super expensive. Basically how I, I got onto the radio was uh, they were doing a fundraiser for an ambulance corps and you could buy 30 seconds from the ambulance corps at $100. Um, and since it was a donation, of course, we could take that off on our taxes. And it, $100 is not that expensive. So I actually took, I think, three, three spots during that day. Um, and we did a lot of, you know, um, just telling people that we're here and what, you know, what we're about. We really didn't have any event going on or anything. Another thing we did was um, mats at your local diner. If you're ever at your local diner and they have paper mats with advertising, you'll see a number on there, and that's the company that does the printing. They're, they can be very affordable. Um, I was doing mine through the winter uh, because the, there's really a, a lot of tourism and they go through a lot of mats in the summertime. So the cost would have been three or four times what the winter time was. And you get the beginning of the summertime because the print run runs into the spring, summer. And that actually, I got a couple of very good long-term customers from those mats. Um, we actually are probably gonna go back to them. Uh, I'm looking to get into a couple of other um, places other than the one that we were in so that uh, we can get, get that kind of coverage that we need. But this one was not too far away. This diner is about 10 minutes away, but it's a super popular diner uh, with really good food. And uh, like I said, the, the ad did great. Now, I don't know if you have one of these in your area. If you don't, maybe this is another business you can start up. We have something called the Little Paper. And basically they drop off these 
copies, which they probably just do at a print shop. I think a print shop used to do them and now somebody else has it and has them printed up. But it's basically just all ads from all your local businesses, like within a, in your probably 10 to 15 mile radius. And then all your local businesses that advertise have these in their businesses. And basically our ad in here is about buying because as a collectible shop, there's nothing we need more than people to bring us their collections. Um, video game stuff, comic books, magic cards. You know, we list what we buy right on the, on the ad. And this has been phenomenal and for very little money. So we pay $15 uh, a week for this. Um, we buy it in a six or eight week. It's like $190 and we get like eight, uh, eight weeks or 10, 10 or 12 weeks. I forget exactly how many, but it, it has been gangbusters. It's, it's worked fantastically. Now let's move on to the social media because uh, I know a lot of you uh, are using that and I would like to get some feedback on that from any shop who's done a particular thing and been super successful. Um, we've made a couple of small commercials that we've put online. Um, we're gonna insert them here. This is the first one. Hey there heroes, you want stuff? We got stuff everywhere, all over the place. But where is it? On eBay, come to our eBay store. You want comics? We got comics! Up here, down there, video games. Games? We've got games! Toys, pops, you want toys? Toys, 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 toys. Where? On our eBay store. Go there, find them. You need it, we got it, come down. So that one was based on an old uh, commercial in upstate New York, uh, Crazy Eddie. Uh, I don't think he made it countrywide, but it, probably the whole East Coast. He was a pretty big guy back in the 70s, early 80s. He got indicted for fraud, and it's, uh, but he had hysterical commercials. Um, and that's what that commercial was kind of based on. And then we have another, uh, another ad out of New York City, um, uh, 877. Um, cash now, right? So we base this next ad on that. You have a box of nerdy stuff, but you need cash now. Come here and hear us. The numbers on the screen. You have magic. We will buy comics and toys. We supply. Magic comics, video games, you need cash now. Call Haven for Heroes. The numbers on the screen. The numbers on the screen. The numbers on the screen. <laughs> it's your money. Get it when you Call Haven for Heroes. The numbers on the screen. You know, we like to keep it light and funny. And, uh... Again, we were looking for uh, people coming, coming out of COVID, needed some extra cash. We wanted them to bring us their stuff. Everybody's like, don't you want to sell stuff? Listen, selling kind of takes care of itself in the collectible market. The collectors are out there. Um, they Google, they look for you. Um, I need people to bring me stuff on the regular. And so that's why a good percentage of our ads are about buying we're always buying we always pay cash and uh you know everybody knows we list what we pay right out in the front we tell everybody right off the get um so that there is no like in during negotiations um you can quibble about condition and stuff like that and then it moves little it moves a little but it'll never move a lot right so we try to be really honest up front it makes negotiations go much easier and much faster. So back to, the, back to advertising. So when we made our two ads, when we posted them on Facebook, we boosted them. Uh, we also posted it on YouTube. Um, and it is one of my highest, highly, most highly viewed YouTube videos. Um, probably the highest viewed. It's only 30 seconds though. So like YouTube doesn't care. Um, uh, we're a small channel. Uh, but 
the uh, people that responded to it on Facebook, because we posted it on Facebook, was incredible. It was a lot of fun. People really enjoyed it. They got a good laugh out of it. And uh, we did see a spike in our eBay sales for a short period of time. We probably could have uh, either made another ad or, or pushed that ad out again after some time, uh, but we moved in a different direction. Uh, but we will be making some more ads because obviously we have fun with the camera and uh, we've got some new stuff to do. So if you have any suggestions for uh, an ad from like a retro ad that we could uh, copy or parody, please send it along. Um, you know, uh, there's a couple of things that I was thinking about the, the My Pillow guy, that, that could be really funny. Um, just a lot of different of like the slap chop. Uh, some of those crazy as seen on TV ads are always fun to parody. But if you know one in particular, you know, um, send me a link to my Instagram, because uh, I don't think you can link in YouTube, but send, my, send me a link in Instagram or uh, Twitter. And uh, yeah, I'd love to see it. Uh, it would be uh, a lot of fun to make an ad uh, together with, the, with everybody. Uh, and we're, you know, we're gonna do a behind the scenes because it's gonna be part of the comic shop talk. So we'll be doing that. Now, Instagram, I don't post enough on Instagram. Having a full-time job and a uh, full-time comic book guy at the comic shop, uh, I know everybody says, oh, it takes a couple of minutes. And I, and I try to every day to post once and I miss a lot. But I do see traction uh, through Instagram, adding Instagram followers. And the more Instagram followers you have, the more that your store's name gets out there, People will then search you out when they're in the area. Um, I've noticed that uh, when people see you either on Instagram or YouTube or even Twitter, when they meet you in person, it's kind of a, like a little thing, right? So I, I am all about social media. I just really don't have the time and I don't have the money to hire somebody to do it. I wish I did because uh, I would have them three, four posts a day um, and the other thing is you got to make the posts interesting. Like I could just take a picture of the new books for when, you know, and just put new comic book day and then post it out. I think that's flat. I think you got to be a little bit more exciting than that. Every, if you read comics, you know what the new comic books are out for the, for the day, for new, for Wednesday. So, you know, I like to do the stuff, the, the cool stuff that comes in like wall pictures, uh, card collections, been getting a lot of uh, magic and a lot of Pokemon in. Um, I think we got some crazy Yu-Gi-Oh coming in in the, in the next couple of days. But that's a great place when you get a new item in to put out, uh, put it, you know, put the hashtag for sale, put the hashtag Pokemon, get your hashtags right, uh, get people out there interested. Uh, I have only sold one item over Instagram because I don't post enough. So I don't have enough uh, followers. Oh, by the way, follow me on Instagram. Hit me here. <laughs> that is a cheap, cheap way of getting more Instagram followers. But seriously, um, Twitter, I think, is uh, not as good at drawing customers in. I think Instagram is way better for customers. Twitter is more of uh, building an audience to send to your autogram, uh, Instagram. Um, Facebook, we don't have a we don't have our own website because really how hard it is to drive traffic to to your own personal website nowadays. I mean, it used to be a little bit easier because there wasn't this huge Facebook platform. But now that Facebook has an actual like businesses have their own Facebook page and their own store attached to their why would I pay 10 to 15,000 dollars to build a website? to not get the same kind of traffic I can get on a Facebook page. Uh, the store has worked really well for us. We've made a bunch of money on it. Uh, they are still not charging a percentage through the end of the year, which is amazing. Kind of the reason why we closed our um, eBay store for the time being. Look, it, eBay with their fees, it's 20% plus 
I mean, I know this isn't part of uh, the advertising thing, but really you put your effort where your profit is. And if I'm losing 20% on every sale to somebody who's just creating a platform and then somebody's created a platform I can use for free, where I'm gonna be at, I'm gonna be there. So boosting on uh, your stuff on Facebook has been very good events and our ad has worked very good basic boosts on just like new comic book day and stuff like that I tried out it really didn't seem to pay dividends so I would say if you have a special event start boosting it early uh, boost heavy at the when you get really close um, so initially you boost it have it end and then start a new campaign of boosting uh, and go heavier. Um, so the same amount of money in the shorter amount of time. So you, you get a higher number. And it also reminds people, right? So if you're three weeks out from free comic book day and you boost the event uh, on Facebook, as that three weeks, people start to forget. So you, you wanna have it end before the last week and then start up a new campaign uh, on that last week with a with a little bit more money so that you're gonna hit a lot more people But it's also gonna be a reminder to everybody that that saw it in the first place and Using the events like when you create it as an event You can invite a lot of people the more people you have on your Facebook page that uh, will be invited uh, Then you know you have that all that notification done so that when you do you you when you're boosting I usually don't include the people that I invited um, I include only people that don't like my page. So that's what I do. If you have different um, different way of doing it and it's been successful for you, please leave a message in the comments. Hit me up on Instagram. Um, like I said, this is just my experience in a small market comic store in upstate New York. Different states, different things. Uh, go on, places might not have little papers. You know, if you're a big metropolitan area, they don't have a little paper. There's there's no guy doing doing this in, in a small area, in, in like New York City or Detroit or Metro, um, Minnesota um, is a state, <laughs> but uh, Minneapolis is what I wanted to say. So like a big a big city may not have this little paper, uh, but people may be still reading the regular paper, or they might be papers that um, like if there was still a music newspaper around I would definitely be in that there used to be like when there was a lot of music events going on there used to be these like little newspapers that just talked about uh, the bands and the clubs and where you could see bands and then interviews with bands that's a great if you have one of those that's a great that's your target market are those people who are into going to see indie bands and you know new stuff a lot of them are art students if you've got a college in your area, there may be a college newspaper. You should be advertising in the college newspaper. Um, we don't have a college nearby. I wish, I wish, because that is built-in business. Um, actually, I've been looking, because uh, I'd like to open a second shop at some point, and I've been looking for places that don't have uh, LGS, LCS, it, that have a good number of colleges in the area. So if you know a spot, Shout, shout it out. Uh, yeah, hit us up in the comments. Back to advertising. So uh, radio, what I found was I was getting free radio advertising um, when I was holding exciting events. So when I had people here from The Walking Dead, uh, they mentioned it on the radio, but they put it on their website, which is actually, they do get a lot of traffic on their website. They put a whole article on who we would be having, when it would be, and for how long it would be going on. Um, and I'm, I, I connected with the guy, a uh, really cool guy, and he said, if I ever have an event going on, just send him a message and uh, you know he'd throw it up on the website. So networking, there's, there's the, another part of advertising. Free advertising is one of the best advertising you can get because advertising is very expensive. Um, make sure you stick to your budget that you put on, uh, on your shop, but make sure you're out there networking to get free advertising. Um, 
calling into shows, uh, giving away free tickets to, to things. Like if you purchase a couple of tickets to uh, a local convention, maybe you just give it to the radio station to give away and they can say, ah, oh, this, this was sponsored by, um, if the local convention hasn't already done that. There's a lot of different things you can do. There's probably some things I haven't mentioned, probably some things I forgot to mention. Uh, if you have a local television station, try to try to get on there. I mean, I don't know how many people are watching uh, your local television anymore, but it's possible. And again, it's about buying and getting your stuff from the locals uh, that you need to resell. So keep reading comics.